chemical energetics, or just plain old energy. All right, now, energy is defined as the capacity to do work or produce heat. And you know, if you're a physicist, you're really concerned about the work aspect of that definition, right? You're talking about potential energy and kinetic energy. Remember those formulas, MGH, uh, for potential energy, and one half equals MV squared, and that's for kinetic energy? Well, those have limited application to chemistry, but, and they do have some application. We've actually used those formulas before. But the real thing that we want to talk about in the energetics unit of chemistry, when we talk about energy, is that capacity not to, pr to do the work, but produce heat. That's, that's the idea that we're going to go after. So there's some definitions that we need to consider when talking about heat and heat exchange um, in chemistry. And, well, first of all, the first law of thermodynamics, that's very important as an underlying principle, right? So the first law of thermodynamics, you know, is that energy cannot be created or destroyed. It's merely converted from one form to another. And that means then that the universe has today a certain amount of energy in it and tomorrow it's going to have that same amount of energy. We don't make it, we don't get rid of it, it's always there in the same quantity, it's just that we can convert from different one type of energy to another. Like, like for instance solar energy, the energy that comes from the sun, can be converted into heat, it can be converted into light, and that light of course through photosynthesis can be converted into uh, uh, chemical potential energy in, in sugar molecules in the plant, which when we eat and metabolize, and then uh, living things can actually decay and break down after they die, and they can become coal, oil, and natural gas, we think, which are fossil fuels. Those are energy conversions all along the way. Um, and yet, and of course, by the way, as you would, would surmise, that every time we do an energy transfer, and say from the sun all the way to fossil fuel energy, we're going to lose an amount of energy through heat along the way. We don't get 100% energy conversion into that molecule that we would maybe really want. There's energy that's going to be lost in terms of heat and physically in terms of things like friction. Well, okay, that's the first law of thermodynamics. You can't make energy, you can't break and get rid of energy, you just convert it from one form to another. Now the second law of thermodynamics really is, it talks about the entropy of the universe increasing. And, and for our intents and purposes in this unit of study, here's what it really means. You know that, that heat is going to naturally flow from one area to another. And what is that? And it's never broken, by the way, it's always like this, that energy and heat always moves from areas where it's warm to areas where it's cool. That's the direction of heat flow, from where it's warm to where it's cold. That really is something that, that you get from the second law of thermodynamics. Actually, did you know that there's a, there's a third law of thermodynamics? And it talks about entropy of a perfect crystal being uh, uh, absolutely nothing or no randomness at zero kelvins, which is uh, absolute zero. Well, that's kind of interesting. We talk about that later in thermodynamics. And then there's actually a zeroth law of thermodynamics, believe it or not, which is quite simply put like this, that yeah, it's a zero with law because I think that once they got the first law and they established that as a principle, they went back and said, well, you know what, I think this law better come before the first law, so we'll call it the zero with law, which is actually that the temperature of region A, if it's the same as the temperature of region B, and region B is the same as region C, then the temperature of region A is the same as the temperature of region C. Yeah, believe it or not, that's like the zero with law of thermodynamics. Okay, anyway. Um, and what you need to understand about heat flow also is that, well, here, if we've got a system and we're talking about this thing and it's under investigation, so we're calling that the system, everything around it is going to be called the surroundings. So we've got a system in surroundings. And we always talk about heat flow in terms of how it affects the system, not the surroundings, the system. So if a system gains energy from its surroundings, that's called endothermic. So the system gaining energy is endothermic. If the system loses energy into the surroundings, of course, that is an exothermic reaction. Now an exothermic reaction, as a quantity of energy or heat, is going to most uh, often be defined as being a negative quantity. Don't be thinking that it means negative, it just means heat is released. The negative means heat is released, and that's all it means. So sometimes in calculations, we're actually going to drop that negative, 
because it won't make sense to keep it in as a negative quantity. But just understand that the negative means that energy is released. Okay, so that's just the, the, the introduction to energy here. And now let's talk about kinetic and potential energy specifically.